Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. Yeah, I haven't posted a video in a week other than just posting, you know, all these random cable network promos like HBO, Showtime, and the Movie Channel. Yeah, those premium channels. Uh, joining in with a commercial break from a WB station in Portland, Oregon. Yeah, KWBP. I thought, why not? <laughs> Just so I can keep up with the channel. But I had to run some errands for a while. I mean, now that all the stores have been reopened. And, of course, with the madness going around with the protests and the COVID-19 going around. I mean, we have to deal with social distancing. And have to wear all the masks and rubber gloves. Or sometimes we don't, but whatever the case. Um, try to do what we can to be safe, but at least I'm happy to note that yes, we are going to get all the movie theaters to be reopened since they've been putting out some pretty bad movies lately on streaming. But I'm trying to do my best to find some good ones here. Otherwise, what's the point? But let's hope so. Um, but anyway, I'm actually doing a movie review this week on the count of this special day, which is Father's Day. A day for all fathers around the world where you get to spend time, you know, buying some gifts, you know, having all these fun activities, eat out, and do whatever you want for your fodder. So that way you can spend more time. Yep, just like Mother's Day or Grandparents' Day. <laughs> yeah, it's the perfect time for your family. So, for this special day, I'm going to be reviewing a 1997 comedy called simply Father's Day, which stars two of the legendary comedians, Robin Williams and Billy Crystal. And they were a match made in heaven, no doubts. I mean, they've been together for a very long time, too. Um, you know, because they both have done a lot of stand-up. Not to mention they supported a, a comic relief uh, charity fund for HBO, joining in with uh, Robin Whoopi Goldberg, because I know she's also a comedian herself too, but she's a very natural talent as well. So, during the, the late 90s, um, both uh, Crystal and Williams were actually appearing in movies and TV shows together, which was nice. Um, in fact, in 1996, they just did the movie Hamlet, that Kenner Brennan had did, you know, based on the Shakespeare play. I mean, even though we did have the Mel Gibson version in the 90s, but came out in 1990. And they just did this movie, joining in with director Ivan Reitman, best known for giving us Ghostbusters, as well as Stripes, Twins, Kindergarten Cop, and produced uh, the Beethoven films. I mean, what a delight. Because it's based on a French comedy called Les Caparez, which stars Pierre Richards and Gerard de Badeau. Yeah, two French actors. I know Gerard de Badeau had went on to do other films uh, in his career. I mean, especially when he came to America with movies like Green Card and My Father the Hero, among others. Um... But anyway, it's, um, it's a story about a young mother who enlisted two former lovers, yeah, who are, yeah, one is a lawyer and the other one is a, a, a writer who's very suicidal and a bit, bit of a goofball, or pretty much is a goofball. They're about to help to search for their runaway teenage son, who actually, um, ran away with his girlfriend somewhere around um, uh, Sacramento which at this rate or even San Francisco because you know that's where he wants to go into a concert which at this rate a Sugar Ray concert <laughs> yep and this is the movie that pretty much introduces us to the band Sugar Ray which I know they started in 95 I believe 
But if it wasn't for that, I guess we would have known what who Sugar Ray was. But that's Mark McGrath's uh, alternative rock band, and and a mixture of pop too. Um, but um, that I always been a fan of Sugar Ray, you know, for a long time. I love their songs like Fly, which came out in '97 of that same year as this movie did, and then it follows with another album. Yeah, 1459, which that's where we had the song uh, Every Morning, Falls Apart, Someday, yeah. And then another album too, where, which is When It's Over. I mean, great band, in my opinion. I love their songs. And Mark McGrath is, definitely has a personality of, of his own. Yeah, I love them too, um, but whatever the case here. <laughs> um, I thought this was a very delightful comedy, and to actually have both of them together for the first time. And I really miss Robin Williams so much. I mean, and it's kind of ironic that the writer that he plays is suicidal. So, what are the odds here? because of the irony that happened to him and it's very depressing but he's always been such a hilarious comedian I always love him and Billy Crystal I always loved him ever since um, that movie Run, Running Scared with uh, Gregory Hines God rest his soul too um, but I always love his comedies I love his stand up I know he's done um, Saturday Night Live yeah, you know, I remember he played that character where he's always saying, "You look marvelous," and you know it's funny though too because uh, both Billy Crystal and Julie Louis Dreyfus were on Saturday Night Live. I think it was roughly at that time when it appeared. So what do you know? They're both in the movie, <laughs> but it's cool because even though Julie Louis Dreyfus has been known for playing Elaine Bennis on Seinfeld. And I love Seinfeld, a very popular show with Jerry Seinfeld, along with Jason Alexander and Michael Richards. You know, of course, joining in with Larry David for the TV series uh, Fridays, okay? Uh, anyway. Yeah, unfortunately, um, by the time it's released, um, it was a critical and commercial failure. Yeah, they didn't care for it for obvious reasons, but I don't understand. I'm sorry, but I'd rather watch this than many of the bad comedies that we get these days. But don't get me wrong though, there are good comedies out there and I can deal with raunchy ones too, all right? But nothing would be the same without Billy Crystal and Robin Williams together. So that's all I have to say here. Uh, anyway, let's get to the review because that's what I'm, I'm here for. Stars once again Robin Williams, uh, Billy Crystal, Julie Louis Dreyfus, Natasha Kinski, yep, great actress who's been best known for being in the remake of Cat People, yeah, the horror uh, remake. Uh, Charlie um, Hofheimer, which I believe he went on to do the the TV series Madman, but he was actually in the 1994 um, film uh, who played uh, Jim Garland called Lassie which has Tom Gary from The Sandlot um, Bruce Greenwood who's been in films like 13 Days, Double Jeopardy uh, Worlds of Engagement no not the TV series, the movie with Tommy Jones and Samuel L. Jackson yeah that's him Charles Rocket um, from of course, former cast member from Saturday Night Live, and he was a great comedian. He's been in several movies, but he's no longer with us, sadly. Yeah, uh, Patty D. Arbonville, uh, and I know she's been known for other films she's been in, such as uh, Fresh Horses, with two stars from uh, Pretty in Pink, Molly Ringwald, and. Andrew McCarthy, and also Ben Stiller in, in his earlier role <laughs> before 
he became famous. But of course, he is, of course, the son of the late great uh, Jerry Stiller and Amira. Um, Haley Johnson, Jared Harris, uh, Louis uh, Lombardi, Mary McCoy Mick. Mel Gibson makes an uncredited uh, cameo, surprisingly. Um, and he's also joining in with uh, Catherine, Caroline, and Jason Reitman, long before he became a director for movies like, you guessed it, Juno, as well as Up in the Air, Young Adults, and he's also going to be directing the upcoming Ghostbusters Afterlife, which was supposed to come out this year, but it's going to be postponed for next year. Yeah, I know, it sucks, but what can you do? It's written by Laurel Gans and Babalu Mandel. Um, they've been best known for writing um, great movies uh, such as uh, Splash, Parenthood, uh, even City Slickers. Of course, A League of Their Own. <laughs> and it's directed by, who also produced it, uh, joining in with Joel Silver, Ivor Reitman, Ghostbusters, Dave, um, Kindergarten Cop, yeah, Ghostbusters 2, Stripes, I mean, you name it, those movies. But that's why he's such an excellent director. The movie begins where we meet a 17-year-old teenager named Scott Andrews, who's played by Charlie Hofheimer, who runs away from home with his girlfriend, Nikki, played by Haley Johnson. His mother, Colette, played by Natasha Kinski, had visited her ex-boyfriend, who is a cynical lawyer, and Jack Lawrence, played by Billy Crystal, tells him that Scott is really his son and he wants to find the boy, per se. But Jack totally refuses it at first, I mean, just when he felt pretty shocked. If you saw the theatrical trailer, I mean, when he found out about the, the news, that's where he suddenly spits at his uh, martini, you know, straight to the waiter, but then in the movie, however, he just drinks the whole entire glass. So, wow, what do you, that's really something here. So anyway, meanwhile, we meet a writer named Dale Putney, who's suicidal and all, um, very actually planning on doing it by you know grabbing a gun, putting some bullets on him, was ready to shoot himself. He was already burning his um, his poetry and all this other you know stories that he wrote, and he's played by Robert Williams. He gets a phone call from Colette, who he is indeed another ex-boyfriend, and she tells him the same exactly story. She has showed him the photograph of her son Scott. So realizing that his appointment with the client will keep him in town overnight, Jack decided that he will, will look for Scott, and Dale will definitely join in, even though he's basically just doing <laughs> his impressions and all, you know, trying to dress up, you know, acting all cool and all. <laughs> yeah, it's just pretty funny here. But they wound up meeting a rush trainer who's played by Charles Rocket. Yeah, you know, works at a, at a local auto shop. Well, when uh, Jack met him, he was about to explain to him where Scott is, and he refused to listen, so he was going to tell him to get out and oh, ready to beat Jack up. But apparently, Jack actually <laughs> just kicks him in the nuts and just headbutts him completely. He's trying to tell him exactly where Scott is at. And we're getting a little help. He found out that they were just somewhere around. Um, but of course, uh, <laughs> and by the way, Russ was of course Nikki's father because he happens to be the girlfriend of Scott. So he's trying to find where they were headed because they were about to go to a concert. Um, so at that rate, they had to meet. Uh, a woman named Shirley who's played by 
Patty do Arbor Bill. So that's Nikki's mother. So both Jack and Dale had to search for, for the same son that, that they were all looking for, and that's when they found out that and they were very shocked and then, and then they say, That bitch <laughs> So of course the concert that they had to follow that they were in were of course was a Sugar Ray concert. Yeah, Mark McGrath and the rest of his band. Um, when she asked the, the man for the pictures of their son, they finally realized that Colette had told them the same story about Scott's father. They call them, confesses that she doesn't know which is the father. So now I know this is going to be the biggest trouble of them all. Once um, they beg to find him to settle the situation, so they had to go all the way to Sacramento or di just just to go to a concert to find him and that's what led to that and um, of course because already with Sugar Ray and all I mean you see Scott already drunk so he's already you know passed out his girlfriend Nikki just wants up uh, hanging around with Mark so it seems to me like she was having a relationship with him. I mean, it's kind of weird to actually have a relationship with uh, one of the uh, biggest bands of them all. I know, I know, it's just some interaction here. So now, um, apparently, uh, Scott just ran away. He was already beating up uh, Mark, trying to go after, trying to go with uh, Nikki, and then he just got kicked out already passed out already as it is so both uh, Jack and Dale had to find him but guess what they really found before they found him well they found the wrong Scott and guess who was played by yep Jason Reitman Ira Reitman's son our direct our second director of Juno <laughs> Okay. Well, anyway, they finally found Scott, and they had to take him directly to a local hotel to stay over, and they had to clean him up. I mean, already he's vomiting right away. Uh, then they had to show, you know, all the matches that they had. Like, for example, they had to show uh, Jack's toes and Dale's uh, hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, his toes almost matched pretty much the same as his, but then his hair is like, well, here it has curls, but his hair is all wordy. <laughs> all world right there. <laughs> and you're totally wordless. <laughs> yeah, that was just fun. So, anyway. So Jack gets a phone call to his wife, um, Carrie, played by Julie Louis Dreyfus, who began to find out uh, something suspicious where he, he had to just stay over. I mean, we know that he's actually have a meeting that he has to attend to, but he had to stay over there because, not to mention, to take care of the boy who's already been drunk and sober. And with uh, Dale just trying to give him a shower but he's like taking a shower with him which led to a lot of trouble here and you know, I had to wash him all up with, with his clothes on and <laughs> and, then, and then finally you know he has to put him down and had to dry him and put all the clothes into uh, the tub and just have him wear a robe so he can dry and put him to sleep, of course. So the next morning, since uh, Jack has the meeting to attend to, um, he was also trying to, um, well, now that he woke up for Scott, uh, Jack and uh, Dale were trying to explain to him who the real father is and why their mother had called him up to, to bring him home. But apparently, you know, he was already into bigger trouble as it is, especially when we found out that now that he ran away, 
took um, Dale's clothes because now because already Dale's all wet since the shower and now he has to wear his clothes that was left in the tub <laughs> and that's where of course a carry had came and just looking for Jack but <laughs> already because um, since I know Scott just poured uh, hot coffee on his dick and so he can escape take his money uh, already uh, Scott um, got chased down by two drug dealers you know who actually uh, scammed them five thousand dollars which he actually had to use to buy a necklace for Nikki just to make it up for it so that's why he was going all the way to Reno to find her because there's already a, another Sugar Ray concert and both Jack and um, Dale were about to f find him who's already been chased down by the drug dealers and they ran over him by accident they took him to the hospital uh, Scott just had a broken arm so then things had to continue for the search here and, and it only gets worse when the drug dealers come back and then that's what also led to going back straight to the Reno you know for the concert and then well long story from here <laughs> of course um, of course um, Bob played by Bruce Greenwood had to find um, Scott right away but he, even he has been going for a lot of trouble too when somehow his car broke down had a flat tire and then he has to go all the way down to the local gas station and telling them to actually go all the way up there you know to the hills so they'll be able to uh, fix his uh, car and, and his uh, tire um, but unfortunately he had to go to the bathroom into a porter potty where then a, uh, a mechanic just took his truck and just drive all the way into the porter potty and it fell all the way down into a hill <laughs> and he's all covered with shit <laughs> that was pretty fucked up uh, yeah it really was <laughs> so now um, they had to pick him up as soon as they can but then they kept continue the fall and then when they finally got him out of there uh, they had to wash him up with the hose to get all this shit uh, out of his entire body and they even had to wash out the clothes as well so that way he could be clean I mean it's still like half clean here it's a little bit of shit covered here but either way um, apparently um, he was going to be on his way but then unfortunately it didn't work out as it seems so now he, was, he had to go all the way back home hoping maybe for sure that uh, Jack and Dale will be able to find him as soon as possible and of course now when they finally went to the concert and they just um, got their passes because already with uh, with Carrie just finding out what was going on and Jack had to explain the truth that he might be the son but he was not so sure how this is going to turn out if that was the case even though they were begging to have children someday anyway when they finally got to the concert for uh, Sugar Ray that's when Nikki suddenly broke up with Scott telling uh, him the truth telling him that he was boring and all so now he was with him you know Mark and now they just move around before being chased down once again by the drug dealers and that's where they have uh, Dale was about to headbutt them but he had trouble until Jack finally came and just tells them that you had to use the power of your back to actually headbutt these guys so that's what he did he headbutts them and and <laughs> and he got punched later and then then they both started to headbutt everyone so they got arrested and they had to pay for the bail and all 
So they finally had to head off, um, you know, back to the plane. Um, which I also forgot to mention too was that um, since uh, Dale is very nervous, you know, he's nerve wracking. I mean, he has trouble whenever he drives. You know, he doesn't like getting near people that much. And he he hyperventilates and all. But he also had trouble with planes. You know, whenever he goes on a plane, he just felt like he's a nervous wreck. He's yeah, he's afraid of flying. <laughs> That's why he brings in some water to calm him down, and he's like shaking. shaking. Okay. But we also learned that uh, Scott is also afraid of of flying, so that's why he's trying to calm himself down with the help of Jack. <laughs> so yeah, that that's just fine. And by the way, Dale actually had a beat up uh, Beagle. <laughs> that he has some it's an old car uh... anyway when they finally made it home well that's where they finally revealed the truth about what happens now that Scott is finally back home with his parents but I guess we know exactly what was happening and, and all and well I guess Fane's pretty much learned a lesson to hear about the complications of who the father is or or the fact that they're, they're doing their best to bring their son back home so everything will be back to the way they are. I mean, but who knows, I mean, how that's going to feel between both Jack and Dale. It's a funny comedy, very delightful. I had fun with it. I, I just never understood why people didn't care for it, but I guess maybe it just wasn't for them. But I thought both Robin Williams and Billy Crystal were just have terrific chemistry, sort of like the odd couple of things, even though they're both two former lovers of, of the same woman. I mean, Natasha Kinski was um, very beautiful. It was nice to see her. Uh, Drew Lewis Drive Fist, which was, which she was underused, but still, I mean, it was nice to see her too. Uh, Charlie Hoffner, Hofheimer was okay. I understand. I mean, that's just the whole plot of the film is that they're trying to find their son, you know, who's already getting into bigger trouble as it is. I mean, I guess you could say he's a bit of the weakest part of the film, but. I guess if it wasn't for this entire cast, then who knows. Um, um, same goes with Nikki. She, she was okay. Nothing much. Um, but I love the musical group uh, Sugar Ray, and it's nice that you know we get to see them. And, and, and Mark McGrath can act, definitely, and it shows. I mean, if, if you had watched the, the TV series uh, Don't Forget Your Lyrics, um, Definitely has a great personality right there as the host. Um, and I know he was also joining in with the band in the comedy, you know, based on the popular Hanna Barbera cartoon, Scooby Doo, yeah, the live action version, which I don't give a crap about. But I think between the two films, I mean, this one was better. Or we got to see uh, Sugar Ray. I know they sort of joke around, too, because they thought Sugar Ray was supposed to be the boxer, you know, Sugar Ray Leonard, <laughs> at first. I thought um, Ryman did what he could uh, to join in with um, some great writers, uh, Laurel Gans and Babalu Mandel, because, you know, they've been a great team to write some great comedies and dramas and all. And, um, I mean, I guess it was kind of tough to do a French... Um, comedy as a remake you know, for the American audience. I mean, maybe they just really weren't interested in something like this. I don't know. But come on, when you have these two actors, I mean, they, you can't go wrong with that. I mean, I don't know. Um, and I, I don't understand why Julie Louis-Dreyfus gets nominated for a rat seat. I mean, that's what I don't understand, too. With, uh, again, those damn rat seats. Because it apparently at least your Silverstone won for Batman and Robin as Batgirl, and that makes sense because that was bad, and that was a bad performance from her. 
She deserved better. Even though I love her. Her moves like clueless and all. And I don't I don't understand, man. I mean I, I find the movie to be more funnier than than some of the comedies that came out in ninety seven, although I love Good Burger. And Nothing to Lose, you know, with Tim Robbins and Arn Lawrence. I mean that's another comedy I saw at the time. Yeah, or any other. And I love all the half of the comedies that were coming out too. And seeing that this movie was made in the nineties, I know they were going for this whole punk rock uh, grunge era. It's mostly grunge if you think about it. But that's what they were doing to, to blend in with this comedy. But and again, I think the French comedy did had some punk's exterior too. But I guess they were just really hard on them somehow. I don't know. Well, whatever the case, I mean... I wish the film did so well. I wish it got the attention it deserves. I don't know. Whatever the case. Um, but for a movie that you would watch on Father's Day, it's worth it. I mean, hey, it may have its flaws. I can understand. Maybe it's not as we expected, but I still think it really nails it perfectly. Oh, and, and back to uh, Mel Gibson's uh, cameo appearance. I thought that was pretty clever. It's it's a small cameo, uh, where he he was like like all the other um, punks out there. You know, they they always do a lot of piercing and all. And I thought that was pretty interesting to see him in a short role, where he's just explaining about if if you want Jack to start using some piercing and all. And, and Jack's like, you know, saying to him, does it hurt? Well, he says, not really. Well, maybe it does or so. Yeah. So I, I guess that's the, the case here. But anyway, I mean, still, um, if you love the French comedy, I'm pretty soon you'll you will enjoy this one too. I mean, in, in, in a different way, I mean. I mean, maybe it's not exactly as good as, as the French comedy, but I guess that's okay. I mean, so give it a watch. Especially if you're fans of both Robin Williams and Billy Crystal. Because they're a great comedic team that we could have had already. And I, and I thought they were just both hilarious in the movie, no doubt about it. And sadly, I wish they were in movies together, you know, aside from the Woody Allen picture and the Kenneth Branagh film. They could have had been in another comedy together. But now that Williams is gone, I mean, sadly, I, I wish it never happened. I just wish things were a lot different back then. But, but whatever, I guess we can't change the past. Okay, so, I'm sorry. So that's Father's Day, and I give the movie... In my opinion, four stars. I'm Joseph A. Saboro, and have a happy Father's Day, and I'll see you later. Bye.